morning, everybody, or good afternoon uh, to the advisors at IDC World Source uh, joining us today. Uh, for those of you that I have not met, uh, my name is Alex Chan. I'm the regional wealth leader for Western Canada based out of our uh, Langley office. And I'm part of our national wealth and banking team. Uh, with me here today, I have uh, Graham Allen, our regional wealth leader for the East, based out of our Markham office. Uh, part of our team is also uh, Vic Ray, the national director of banking services based in uh, Vancouver. And of course, our team is led by Jason Payne, uh, RVP of uh, Atlantic Canada, and of course, uh, head of wealth and banking uh, based out of the uh, Maritimes. And this is our session number two. Uh, I did uh, provide Claudette a, a very formal introduction the last time, but joining us back here today is uh, Claudette uh, Richard, who is the National Director of Investment uh, and Retirement at Assumption Life. And session number one, uh, Claudette did go a lot into the business practices and covered many topics. And I believe most of you uh, on the line today uh, join us on session one. And today will be uh, uh, session number two, uh, where Claudette will talk more about uh, uh, investments. And again, some of the covered topics she's gonna go into is uh, securities, uh, other al alternatives such as uh, GIAs, annuities. Uh, she is then going to talk about asset allocation and portfolios and the different types of investment accounts. And then we'll go into fee structures and some of the guaranteed options uh, with uh, segregated funds. So again, thank you once again, everybody, for joining us. I believe uh, uh, Danielle is uh, on the line as well, but he just uh, came on to uh, see what everybody is uh, up to. So uh, thanks, Danielle, for joining us today. And without further ado, uh, Claudette, it's uh, over to you. Hi there, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. So today we're going to go over what we call the investment basics. As an insurer you can count on, we were established in 1903, so a little bit about Assumption Life. We are located in Moncton, New Brunswick. I actually work out of the head office in Moncton, New Brunswick. We have a solvency ratio of 150%, 56%. We have total assets under management of 2.1 billion and the profit attributable to policyholders was 9.5 billion. We are nominated as Atlantic Canada's top employer in 2021. And we also have the credit rating A minus AM best. And just so you know that A minus AM best is the highest credit rating you can have for the size of our organization. On the agenda today, we're gonna to be talking about securities, type of accounts, other alternatives, asset allocation, fee structures, and guaranteed options. We're gonna first talk about GICs in the insurance world, they're called GIAs. They're low risk, so the GICs or GIAs is Basically, the idea is that you're basically lending money to a bank with the guaranteed return that they're going to promise you. Think of it as a loan and lending all your money to a bank and they guarantee you a certain interest rate. We all know that currently the interest rates have been rising with the economy that we're in right now. So now is a good time to look at GICs because the interest rates are a little bit higher than usual. There are different types of GICs. We have non-redeemable, there's redeemable. There's a market linked GIC. So those are basically, they're guaranteed investments. They're linked to the, the stock market and you get a certain amount of return based on the one you choose. They are a contract. So you can buy a non-redeemable GIC. You can buy a one year, a two year, three, five. You can even buy a seven year, which is very rare. Most people will go between one and five years to buy a non-redeemable GIC. They do pay interest. You can buy them at a, as an annual compound. And you can always cancel. Uh, you have a 10-day cancellation period that you can cancel once you buy it. When you do buy a GIC in a non-registered account, it is interest income, so it is the highest tax. So there's three ways to make money that I'll talk to you about in this presentation. There's interest income, there's dividends, and there's capital gains. 
Interest income from a GIC is the highest in tax that you're going to pay. Keep in mind that insurance is the company that guarantees the GIA. So if, if an insurance company goes bankrupt, you are guaranteed money in the GIC. So I'll review that as well during our conversation and in one of the slides to come. So basically, if you were to purchase a $20,000 GIC for three years, so you've locked it in, keep in mind the words locked in, you cannot get out of the contract. There are companies that you may be able to get out of the contract. Sometimes there's a penalty or sometimes they will not pay you any interest. And sometimes you cannot get out of them at all. You have to stay for the three years or five year, whatever you choose. So this is a GIC where you invested $20,000. You, you know, client doesn't wanna take any risk. They don't sleep if they lose a dollar, if they lose $5, they're not gonna sleep at night. Your only really option is either a savings deposit or what we call the GIC. So $20,000, three years at 3%. So you're giving the bank, the insurance company, $20,000. Each year, you're going to earn interest. You're going to earn 3% and your money's going to compound. So you can see the first year you put in 20, you've earned 600. Now your, deposit, your assets worth 20,600. The second year, you made $618. You're now worth 21 to 18 the second year. And then again, that compounds at a 3%. The third year, you earn $636, which earns you a total of 21,854, which means you've made in interest 1854. Your money's locked in for a set amount of time. Again, like I mentioned with some companies, you can access it with a penalty. The higher the interest, typically the longer the term. So if it's a one year, it's gonna be less interest than a five year. The non-redeemable have varying terms. And redeemable GICs, which mean they're cashable at any time. So if your client was to sell their house, they have 500000 and they're not going to buy a house for six months, but they don't want to lock it in, you can choose a redeemable. However, the interest rate is usually lower. There is a surest coverage on the segregated fund side. So 60000 or 85%, whichever is higher. Okay, And I'll show you examples of that as we, as we go through the webinar. On the GIA, it's 100%. However, it's a maximum to 100,000. Now, it does vary in different accounts. So is it a sole owner account? Is it a joint account? So all this information can be found on the Assurance website. And I know most of you probably have your LLQP. So you're used to the Assurance coverage because I know you use it on the life insurance side as well. Let's talk a little bit about bonds. What is a bond? A bond is a loan broken into pieces. It's a security issued by a company or government. And buying a bond is like lending money to another entity. Two things come with a bond, a coupon rate and a promise to get your money back. They're less risky than stocks because the bondholder always pays first if the company goes bankrupt. So that's why they're less riskier than stocks. And there's all kinds of bonds. There's federal bonds, municipal bonds, utility bonds. The more chances of a company going bankrupt, the lower the credit rating the bond will have. So how do bonds work? So let's take a look. We have a company is looking to build a new $10,000 concert, concert stadium. Now they need to raise $5 million. So what they do, they go out, they issue 5,000 bonds at $1,000 each. Bonds, like I said, come with a coupon. Usually they're paid semi-annually. So this one's a two-year maturity. Here's what it looks like. For the next two years, what's gonna happen is you're gonna receive your coupon rate of $50 at the six month mark. Then you're gonna get another $50 at the 12 month mark. Then you're gonna receive your 18, 18 months, another $50 because it's your semi-annual coupon paying you. And at the end of the, the two years, it's at maturity, you're gonna get back your $1,000 plus you're gonna get your extra $50 uh, coupon rate. At maturity, the company must pay back the bondholders or issue a new type of bond. How do stocks work? A stock represents partial ownership of a company. Each stock has a value depending on the company's worth. You're buying a share of a company which have a claim on its future earnings. So we'll talk a little bit about how the growth works on stocks. There's two ways to make money in stocks. It's either stock appreciation or dividends. So when you buy a stock, there are dividends, and we'll explain a little bit about that in, in the presentation. So two ways to earn money in the stocks. Here's your piece of the pie. As the pie grows and the company's doing well, that's stock appreciation, 
When a company's value goes up, its stock will increase, allowing investors to profit by selling their shares at the current value to the other investors. Dividends. Dividends are portions of the profit that pay out to shareholders periodically based on the earnings of the company. Usually, dividends are paid out on a quarterly basis on most stocks. Now, trying to juggle all this, buying bonds and stocks can be a full-time job. And we all know we want to be out building our business and not finding out which stock I should buy or which bond I should buy. So we have great news. You can focus on building your business and leave all the bond and stock related decisions to the professional fund managers. The key takeaways are know the different types of securities and how they grow in value. Understand the risk of investing in stocks. You do not need to know everything to sell investment. Leave the fund selection to the professional money managers. This is what makes investing easy while you're out building your book. There are different account types we're gonna talk about. And we have RSPs, we have RIFs, we have Liras, we have TFSAs, the tax-free savings account, the spousal registered retirement savings plan, the spousal registered retirement income fund, and the LIF income fund. And coming soon is the new account that the federal government just announced, the tax-free first home savings account. So that will be a great account for any of your clients that are young that want to start saving for their home, it will be a great account for them. The other account there is that's not on here is there's also an account called the registered, it's called the registered education savings fund. So it's RESPs. So it's basically an account for any of your clients that have children and they want to save for university, they would choose the RESP. Non-registered is a type of account that is subject to tax when income is earned on investments held within this account. So all the accounts that I mentioned here, there is no tax until you withdraw from it at retirement or period. If you withdraw at age 50 and you're in the RSP, there is going to be tax to be paid on there. However, on the non-registered account, there's annual tax on an annual basis. The investment inside is not tax sheltered. Your clients will receive tax slips at the end of the year on a non-registered account, the T3 slips, usually it's an interest income, T5 slips are the capital gains and dividends. They'll also receive T5013, T5008. There's three ways to earn uh, income, like I mentioned. The first way is interest income. This is taxed at your marginal, the client's marginal tax rate. There's dividends. It's going to qualify for the dividend tax credit. So that's the second way. It's a, a better way than interest income. And then, of course, there's capital gains, which is the best way to make money because you're only taxed at 50%. Other types of accounts, we have corporations. So if you have clients that are self-employed and they want to invest within their company, you can open up corporation accounts. We have trust accounts. This could be they're designed at, for a third party usually, so it's agreed upon terms. And basically, it could be a spousal trust. It could be a testamentary trust. It can be any type of trust that's usually designed for a third party. And then we have guaranteed annuities. Annuities are financial products that offer a guaranteed income stream and is usually for retirees. So the person's getting ready close to retirement. And now that interest rates are coming up a little bit, they're probably a little bit more attractive than in the last few years. Key takeaway is optimize your client's RSP and TFSA before opening another type of account. Again, we are financial planners. I've always in my financial planning career told clients they should seek accounting advice because we are not accountants. Know the three ways to earn income in a non-registered account. Again, interest income, dividends, and capital gains. Know the key different account types. And you'll learn all this as you go. You'll start to see that it's very easy as you start to learn about investments. So this is basically RSPs have a tax limit, so a, a deposit limit. Uh, the deadline is usually March 1st of each year. So next year, March 1st, 2023 will be the deadline. Keep in mind, any unused RSP room is carried forward indefinitely. The growth is tax sheltered until you withdraw the funds. Amounts contributed to your company RSP do uh, count as an RSP uh, deducted. So from your, from your room available, if you're doing a company RSP, make sure that you deduct that on your available contribution room. This year, the 2022 limit will be 29,218. So it's basically 18% of a client's uh, income 
So on your T4, you can contribute 18% to a maximum of 29,210. And that's if they have maximized each year. If they have unused RSP room, you can also add that on to the 29,210. And the way to find that out for unused RSP room is basically you have your client call CRA, or you can look on your, um, your tax return from when you did your income tax, and it will have the limit of what you can contribute to your RSP. If you take a look at the tax-free savings account, this is an account that came out in 2009. It started with contributions of 5,000. So here's the annual limits that you can contribute each year to a TFSA. So 2022, the maximum is 6,000. And that's if you've maximized each year. So the total would be 81,500. So let's say your clients never ever used a TFSA and they say to you, you know, how much money can I put in my TFSA? You would say, okay, you've never contributed. You would be allowed 81,500. So it's always good to know that your tax-free savings account limits. The benefit of this account is that the assets inside this account is tax sheltered. So it's not like a non-registered where you pay tax each year that every income you earn in this account is tax sheltered, even when you withdraw the funds, uh, either, you know, when you're 50, 55, when you retire, whenever you do a withdrawal in the tax-free saving account, it is actually tax-free. So it's a great place to save money for your clients. Maximize your RSP contribution room. If you've maximized the next best, place would, next best place to invest would be your tax sheltered savings account, the TFSA. Here's just a little guide now. Like I mentioned in our last series, we have a lot of marketing material available for you. We do have all this on one document, the contribution limits, the TFSA contribution limits, as well as this little graph that just kind of tells you, you know, am I going to get a tax deductible receipt? The answer is yes for your RSP, but no for the TFSA. It gives you the limits. Uh, withdrawals, are they taxable? No, the TFSA, they're not taxable. In the RSP, yes. So this just gives you a little guideline. What's the maximum age for contributing? TFSA, there's no maximum. However, the RSP, the maximum age is 71 years old. What investments can you purchase in each account? So if you take a look at the accounts, we have our segregated account, which is an investment contract, and the RIA, which is the registered investment account. Segregated funds, what are segregated funds? It's an investment vehicle offered by insurance companies through a variable annuity contract. What are the benefits? There's guarantees and death benefits that are not available in traditional mutual funds. Comes with a contract from a life insurance company. Provides a maturity benefit and a death benefit guarantee. It bypasses prorate, prorate as long as you put a beneficiary designation. And it also has assures coverage. In the RIA, the RIA investment is a vehicle offered by Assumption Life in the form of an annuity contract with guarantees like segregated funds and low fees similar to mutual funds. Who is it for? It's designed for the fee conscious investor, especially if you're having a client in front of you that's talking about mutual funds at, at anywhere, you know, outside at a bank or an insurance company, they're talking about mutual, mutual funds. It's important to note that the RIA can compete on a fee conscious basis. Ideal for life insurance agents looking to be competitive and as an investment offering to, re, to build a recurrent revenue stream. It also bypasses probate as long as you put a debt beneficiary designation. It has creditor protection on it and also has the assurance guarantee coverage. Here's a little chart that tells you exactly the difference between mutual funds, our RIA, and our segregated fund. So you can see that the RIA and segregated fund have the 75, 75, 75, and 75, 100 guarantees, where mutual funds have no guarantees. On a non-registered account in our segregated funds, you can add a beneficiary designation. This is very good for clients who have like a large sum of money and they want to bypass probate because it does two things. It keeps it private for you when you have a beneficiary because the money will go directly to the beneficiary. And it also bypasses probate. And again, like I said, if you're competing with mutual funds, you can see that the RIA account compares competes with the mutual funds as far as the low fees. You'll learn all this as you go. You'll learn about all the investment jargon, dollar cost averaging, cash flow, building an emergency fund, compound interest. So you'll see over the years as you learn investments, there's a lot of investment jargon out there. 
Limits and tax consideration. These are the key takeaways. Know your tax limits on your RSPs and TFSAs. This is really important because if you go over those limits, you will be penalized by CRA by 1% per month for any of the over contribution amounts. Know the different account types and learn the key investment jargon. Let's take a look at asset allocation. Spot the difference. Now, we put in here a little scenario about vitamins. So it's like taking a vitamin C versus a multivitamin. Diversification made easy. Get the, sim get the simplicity of a single fund and the balance of a portfolio. When you buy a share of a company, you're risking all your money on that one company. Just like taking a vitamin C alone, you'll lack the essentials and won't get the benefits of a multivitamin. This is why you should buy more than one bond and more than one stock in one investment vehicle. Just like with a multivitamin, you can be sure you get everything you need when you're purchasing more than one bond in one stock. Now, let's take a look at asset allocation. So you have everything. You've done the investor profile questionnaire with your client. They scored either conservative, balanced, growth, or aggressive growth. You can take a look on the conservative side. It's 80% bonds. Remember, I told you bonds are less risky than equities. So this is for a conservative investor. The portfolio would be more weighted in bonds and less weighted on the equity side for your conservative client. If the client scored growth, the clients would have more equity, so 75% equity and 25% bonds. So as you learn investments, you'll get to feel your clients and to know if they can take on risk or not. In the investor profile questionnaire that you're going to ask them, it will help you guide you to which portfolio you should choose for your client or which portfolio you should build for your client. Let's take a closer look at what the investor profile questionnaire can do for you. So similar to your needs analysis that you complete on the life insurance side for when you're trying to decide the needs of your clients for life insurance, we also have the same thing on the investment side. It's called the investor profile questionnaire. It will help you assess your client's risk towards the investment to choose. Let's take a look at what kind of questions you're going to ask your clients. So this is the actual investor profile questionnaire. I want to review my investments with my advisor annually. Do what, does the client agree or disagree? I expect to access or redeem some of these funds before their intended use. So if your client's 30 years old and they're telling you this money's for retirement, we want to know, do you think you'll be, you know, withdrawing from these before your retirement date? Agree or disagree? I'm worried about short-term fluctuations in my investments. So what that means is, you have $100,000 and, you know, market volatility, which is here right now with us, your $100,000 has dropped to $90,000 and you're not going to sleep at night if you do that. Or you understand that the markets go up and down and over the long term, they tend to go up. So you're comfortable. So you agree or disagree. So this will either guide you to either what we call our target date funds. So these questions, there's a few more questions on it. It will guide you to the target date funds, or you can say, you know, I really would like to go with the risk profile questionnaire. So then it's going to ask you a little bit more in-depth questions, and it will get you to a different portfolio selection. And we'll talk about that in series number three. So these are other questions that you will ask. I intend on using these investments in less than 10 years, agree or disagree. I've not been able to save significant amount of money on a consistent basis, agree or disagree. If you look at the chart below, uh, which one do you resonate with, A or B? And, you know, you can see it going up and down. So, you know, there's more. If you look at uh, investment A in the chart below is, is a bit more conservative than your investment B. However, the investment B, you can see, goes up quite a bit higher. Usually a growth portfolio usually outperforms your conservative portfolio. So then they say agree or disagree. We know that volatility is here. It's part of the recovery. Is uh, Recovery is a part of volatility. So over the years, we've also had this in a marketing one pager for you. It's a great document to show clients, especially during when the markets are volatile. You can show them, you know, over the years, we've had a lot of market corrections. However, you can tell the chart is always on its way up. And that's usually how markets work. These one pagers just help you when you're sitting in front of your client. We have one on dollar cost averaging, so it helps you as well to be able to show your clients because 80% of clients are visual. Key takeaways are get to know your client's risk tolerance with the investor profile questionnaire. 
Diversify your clients' investments with portfolio solutions. We have 18 portfolio solutions available to you in both our segregated fund side, as well as our registered investment account. Volatility and recovery are part of the investing journey. So there are ups and downs in the markets, and that's why you want to make sure that you have the correct asset allocation for your clients. Let's talk about fees, maturity options, and guarantees. So our SEG fund have what we call management expense ratio. The reason you're paying higher MERS in segregated funds versus mutual funds is due to the guarantees that come with your segregated funds. I talked about the non-registered account where you can add a beneficiary designation. This is huge because you bypass probate. We have a marketing one pager that we just did on probate and fees and how expensive it can be when you're when you're choosing perhaps a mutual fund where you cannot put a beneficiary designation on a non-registered account. We also have the RIA, which is the registered investment account, and those have management fees versus MERs. RIA have lower management fees. They have guarantees like segregated funds, so the 7575 or 75100 and lower fees like mutual funds. So on both the registered investment account and the segregated fund, we have 7575 and we have 75100s. On a mutual fund, there are no guarantees on them. So there's no 7575, there's no 75100, there's no guarantees on the mutual fund option. So now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about death benefits. So your client has invested $20,000. Unfortunately, your client dies here and the portfolio, we're in a market correction, kind of what we're in right now, and the portfolio has dropped to $14,000. The benefit of choosing a segregated fund is if your client dies on the 75100, the guarantee that your client received is $6,000 when it's at 14. So your client is going to receive, the beneficiary is going to receive $20,000. So that's the guaranteed insurance that you purchase within that segregated fund. Now, if you take a look, if your client passes away in the portfolios at 28,000, well, yes, you've paid for the guarantee. However, there was no need, you did not need that guarantee because it's actually up from what the client put in. So that's what the death benefit guarantees look like. Mutual funds have no guaranteed option. So if the client was to pass away in a mutual fund, they put 20,000 in it, they're in an RSP, they've designated a beneficiary, the beneficiary is going to receive $14,000. Top three advantages of segregated funds is their death benefit, their creditor protected, and the privacy. Once the money is in a non-registered account has a designated beneficiary, it does not go to probate, which also protects your client in a privacy. Money goes directly to the beneficiary and no need to have everybody know your business. Higher costs are worth more than the death benefits alone. So this is comparing our non-registered account, a segregated non-registered account, because keep in mind the RIA is only for registered investments. So in a segregated account, you can put the non-registered. In a mutual fund, you can not bypass probate because you cannot put a beneficiary designation in a mutual fund that's non-registered. On our SEG fund, you can put a beneficiary designation. This is the money it will save you. You will not have any legal or accounting fees. You will not have any executor fees. So your investment value of a million net proceeds will be a million dollars. You have just saved yourself all of the fees that are associated with legal and accounting fees. And just so you know, these numbers the 12,400 and the 25,000 is the average amount of fees that clients will pay in Canada based on an investment of a million dollars for non-registered accounts. So you can see by choosing segregated funds, it pays very quickly, it goes directly to the beneficiary and you have saved $51,900 to your family. So keep in mind, if you go to probate, it can take between three and 12 months or even more, because if it ends up in probate court, it can take a little bit longer. So bypass probate, mitigate hidden costs, and keep your financial affairs private. Key takeaways are understand the difference between the various death benefits. Insurance contract provides the annuity with death benefits, 
creditor protection, privacy for their loved ones. And it's really, really important because people don't realize that the privacy issue is big. If a client has an account of 1.5 million, they do not want everybody knowing about that. So if you have a beneficiary designation on that non-registered account, it will bypass probate and it will keep it private. Let's take a look at compound interest. The power of compound interest and how it works. Here we have Joan and Alan. Joan was smart. She started saving at 19 years old. She started saving $2,000 a year and she stopped saving at 29 years old. The total she invested is $22,000. We have Alan who started late. He started at 30 years old and had to save up to 64 years old. $2,000 a year, 6%. Again, he put in $70,000. You can see that Joan, her investment grew 10 times versus what Alan's did. His investment grew over three times. So you can see compound interest is really powerful and you should get your clients saving as soon as you can at the earliest age. Again, this is another marketing piece that we designed for you that you can use to show your clients why they should start investing early. Even if it's $25 on a biweekly payday, even if it's $50, just get them started. The most important rule that I always told my clients was pay yourself first. Now, I tried to get them to the 10% mark, so minimum 10% mark. So this is a one-pager that we created. It basically shows your client the difference over a 25-year period, increasing the pack at 2.25 per year. So you're indexing with inflation, probably not inflation today because a little bit high today. So we may need to change these numbers in the future. We'll see what the future holds. But for now, we use the 2.25. So basically, your clients either doing a $25 biweekly pack on their payday, 50, 75, 100, or 125. And what this does, it allows you to show them the difference of how much it will grow to over these 25 years based on which pack they choose. So basically, just get your clients started. And again, this was at 6% net return. The earlier you start, the more you will benefit from compound interest. Even small contributions can really add up over time. Anyone can start saving for retirement. Get your client saving. Start the pack. It's like I said, you'll already have collected your voided check. You already have their ID because you've just sold them life insurance. Now all you need to do is bring all that back to the office, have that risk profile questionnaire all filled out, and use Vesta, and you send it basically electronic signature to your clients. So it saves you another hour trip at their house. Holistic financial planning. Tell the story you want your clients to hear. I always had a PowerPoint presentation built and I would know which slides I'd wanna show my clients. Introduce yourself, explain how you are different. This is really important. Bring helpful material that you can leave behind. Again, like these marketing one pagers that I'm showing you, you go see your client, you leave these one pagers behind. You know, they're great one pages for them to understand that they can build wealth with one pack at a time. Have a go to presentation to support your story and close the deal. You will find once you build a PowerPoint presentation and you know which clients you're going to be seeing, you'll be able to hide the slides and show them exactly the slides you want to show. You know, are they early, uh, just newlyweds getting ready to buy a house or maybe they're getting ready to save for, for, for purchasing their first home? Are they clients that their kids are getting ready to save for, for university? So you'll know when you're meeting your clients what life cycle they're in. Increase your knowledge. couple great books, Tony Robbins, Money Master the Game, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and The Wealthy Barber. The Wealthy Barber is one that you can read that really talks about the power of compound interest. This is series two of a three-part series. Next series will be how to get started writing investment business. Get easy, fast, and quick investment solution to help you effectively write investment business. Today, we covered stocks, bonds, type of accounts, RSPs, TFSA limits, and we've just went over RIA, segregated funds, and how to protect your client's money from going through probate. Next, next week when we meet, we'll be discussing easy sales process. Again, that will be the stuff. SEG versus RIA, we'll get into more in-depth detail. We'll have portfolio solutions to show you because probably 
you want to look at our 18 portfolios that we offer both in our segregated fund side in our RIA side, as well as we'll also review a few of our individual funds if you'd like to build your own portfolios. I can tell you we just did a marketing one pager on our 18 portfolios. We took a look at the returns and in the industry, it, we are very competitive on our returns and our MERS for our portfolios and our individual funds. We'll talk to you next week about our Momentum Fund. It's a top fund in Canada. It's got a 15 year return that's excellent and it's number one in quartile rankings and I'll show you that next week. I'll also review next week the compensation so that you know how to get paid. I know I showed you in series one that you could sell your book on a very conservative basis. Next series, I'm gonna show you how you can really sell your book by going into a higher trail and even earn more. I'm also gonna show you over those 18 year period that you're investing with clients, how much money is that going to bring to you as the advisor? I'll show you different one pagers with tools for your briefcase that you can just leave behind with your clients that will help you close the deal. Build your own wealth. I will show you what you can do and how you can sell that book. And we will definitely do a live Vesta presentation for you so that you can see how easy it is to write investment, investments with Assumption Life. Again, like I told you, we have our business development managers all across Canada. We have Mohammed who takes care of Western Canada. We have Gareth and Jennifer who take care of Ontario. We have Youssef and Danielle who take care of Quebec. And we have Midi who takes care of Atlantic Canada. And of course, I'm always available for any investment questions that you may have. I will make sure that you receive all their coordinates for across Canada and as well inside sales. So our team in Inside Sales, we have Patrick Woodrow, who supports Atlantic and Western Canada. We have Sally, who supports Quebec and Ontario. We also have Pudin and Jeremy, who take care of Leah and Vesta. So any Leah questions, so Leah is our insurance platform, and Vesta is our investment platform. So any questions you may have, they can answer any technical questions at all. We also have our team at head office who can answer any of your questions with investments.retirement at assumption.ca. We have tech support, sales support, VESTA support. And of course, don't forget to go to assumption.ca, click on the advisor corner where you'll find many of our marketing material. As well in VESTA, if you go inside VESTA, there is a document center in VESTA, which will get you quickly the one pagers for marketing that you can leave behind with your clients. I will pass it back to Alex to see if there are any questions at this time. Thank you, Claudette. That was a great uh, presentation on investment basics and investment knowledge and also a great uh, refresher for all of us. So uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there were a couple, I guess, uh, requests for the presentation. And with all uh, training and webinars at IDC World Source, uh, we do post uh, uh, all of our trainings on win big. So those ones uh, uh, will be here. And um, let me see, yeah, a couple of requests for uh, the presentations. Again, a great comment from uh, Ken McCoy saying that that was a perfect presentation back to the basics with detailed yet concise information. So again, once again, that's probably why uh, a few of the advisors asked for the presentation. So once again, it will be on uh, win big. And of course, uh, session three, as Claudette uh, uh, outlined, will be brought to you in about a, a week's time. So please look out for the, uh, the uh, invitation and the webinar on that as well. And of course, any of your colleagues that couldn't make it today or the first session, you know, they're more than welcome to attend the last session because Claudette is again going to go into some of the products, the process and everything else uh, uh, at Assumption. So I don't think there's uh, any other uh, questions. Again, if any do come up, uh, please feel free to reach out to Claudette, uh, Graham or myself, and uh, we'll try our best to answer those uh, for you. So once again, I guess this uh, concludes the session today. Uh, thank you again, Claudette, for the uh, great presentation. And thanks, uh, Danielle, as well, for joining us today. And of course, thank you to uh, uh, Wendy and Lisa behind the scenes uh, organizing and hosting our webinars. 
And so without further ado, I hope everybody has a, a great morning or afternoon and we will see you uh, at the next webinar. So thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you, Alex. And thank you all of the advisors for showing up and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Have a great day.